And then you have Moon Knight. And Moon Knight, if I may, <laughs> is actually catching my attention as something original. Yeah, I mean, this. let's get into it. We can obviously yeah. throw in other things we want, but let's get into Moon Knight. Uh, we're running pretty long, so we won't belabor too much, but we do want to see what we're, you know, what what we all think about this show, if we're excited to continue and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Moon Knight. You want me to kick it off? Yeah, yeah, kick yeah it go off. for it. All right, I'll kick it off. Um, so I like it, and I, I like it because every kid inevitably has an Egyptian face. I don't, I don't care, you know, whoever it is. You always have this age where it's, it's got to be between the ages of like eight and eleven, where it's like Egypt is the coolest thing on the planet, and it is. Like honestly, it's like such an interesting culture. It's such an interesting yeah. uh, part of the world. Um. And so you have this like Egyptian phase, and I think they're you know they they kind of play on that you know it's mystique, it's mysterious, it's you know they got all these gods that come into play, right? Which is unique for the MCU actually admitting that there's gods now here that mm -hmm. we've never talked about at all that have somehow or Steve Rogers Peter. would be like, oh no, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's only no, one no, no. man and he doesn't dress like that. <laughs> nice Paul. Um, and so I think, you know, a couple of things I think in episode one, you know, stood out to me is, uh, it was very fight club esque in, in how they decided to kind of mm -hmm. do this, this interaction, right? Like he's, you know, that they, they, he's having these jolts of, uh, you know, times passing and I, I don't know where I am. I don't know what's going on. And you kind of feel in the first part of this episode, disjointed where you start feeling a little like that character where you're trying to piece together. Okay. Is it, is it him? Is he a schizophrenic? Is he, you know, having look, what's going on here. Um, and I thought that was, that was really cool how they kind of portrayed that. And then they actually had consequences to it, which is in fight club. When you, you, you can never tell if there's actual passage of time in fight club. You can just tell mm -hmm. he's having these episodes. Whereas here they have an actual, like, yeah, he, had an episode he missed three days yeah like it's a legit and there's consequences to him doing that and, mm -hmm. he, and his character now has to deal with that situation mm -hmm. um ethan hawk god i it's so funny because i just watched a movie from the 90s uh uh gattaca 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 oh with okay ethan yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um and it's funny that you can still see, like, he looks older, but you're like, yeah, that's, that's Ethan, Ethan Hawke. Um, and it's, you know, the cult-like presence he had. I, the one thing I thought was hilarious is when he's walking through that, that crowd and people are like, I always, yeah. I always laugh because in my mind, that's not characters reaching out to this, you know, what Ethan Hawke character, that's just extras <laughs> trying to touch Ethan Hawke. <laughs> <laughs> I like that better. That tells a better yeah. story. <laughs> just extras trying to touch Ethan Hawke. That's all that, that scene was. <laughs> You'd um, best believe if I was ever in an extra in a Dwayne Johnson, the rock movie, that would be me. It, whether oh, yeah. he's a cult leader or not. <laughs> I would want to be one of the just, extras that he has to like catch. Hell yeah. You know, it'd be like, oh, never let me go. <laughs> <laughs> if you and me have different wants and desires. It's only <laughs> we, we dream different, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's catching you, John? That's I don't know. I don't I don't want to be have to be caught. <laughs> it's okay to be vulnerable, John. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh yeah, I um we had talked briefly about Moon Knight episode one before, but I, mm -hmm. uh, oh, Alan's sharing a picture of Daniel Craig now. That's uh, his, uh, his <laughs> <clears throat> who he's saying is supposed to catch me. You back that up. I mean, is he wrong? Uh, I, I don't, I still don't want him to catch me. All right. I just, uh, <laughs> I, I, the, the awkwardness would be really, I don't know. I, I don't know what would I would you be I the do. extra who reaches out though. Just no. No, no? I, I just no, I I don't know who I I don't know who I would be so overcome that I would ch decide to invade someone else's personal space that way. The, the reason I said that, by the way, is there's a scene in the Hunger Games, uh, second one, where she's walking through the crowd, mm -hmm. uh, dressed up in District 13 or whatever, District One or whatever it was, 
and there's just one hand that comes out and grabs her shoulder. And it's like blatant that that is not part of that scene. That is an extra <laughs> trying to touch Jennifer Lawrence. And that's why every time now I'm just like, that's an extra trying to touch the <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, I, um, I would agree to a bunch of that with uh, with episode one. Yeah, I liked Ethan Hawke in there. Really mm-hmm. don't know about some of the special effects. Uh, we are kind of talking before about how maybe, you know, Disney does have all this money. It feels like they should be putting a little more into some of the effects. A chase sequence, there was a part that just looked kind of blatantly sped up or something. And uh, some weird things like that. But I ultimately kind of like appreciated the difference in tone a little bit. Really liked the music a lot. Thought the mm-hmm. music was a fun, a fun variation. Um, I think that acting wise, everybody was doing pretty well. Um, it did set my hopes up for what became so far a little bit of a disappointment. Like when we first reveal Ethan Hawke's character, he's you know taking a shot and breaking the glass and putting in his shoes to walk, walk out. I was like, that's cool. That's pretty hardcore. I like the idea that feels, that feels darker than what we would have traditionally here. So for me, that was setting a tone and expectation. And the same with, um, you know, moon Knight going and going a little crazy and then like seemingly killing a bunch of people or at least beating the hell out of them, Mm -hmm. um, when he's not aware. And so I was, hopeful for a lot of those things and in episode two i feel like a lot of that didn't follow through then we we moved back to lighter tone the safer territory back yeah we brought back humor when we saw the fight sequences we dealt with a creature we didn't deal with you know punching someone's face in um and then we you know People were likening was going all on the internet when when that first episode came out. They were likening second episode and uh, to Deadpool and mm. and uh, Mister Knight in his suit and stuff being a little goofier. Look at these batons I have and all that kind of thing. And it was again the they cannot resist instead of getting something that I'm hoping is like a dark gritty take on someone with multiple personality disorders. All of a sudden we're thrown into uh, I don't know. He, we're going to deal with this bumbling idiot for quite a while. He finally gets his suit on and now he acts to act like a jokester. And, mm-hmm. um, so to me, it just like completely reversed tone. And, uh, I think they're I really was, trying I was to psycho like, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I, I agree. I think it's too soon to say that's that's the way they're going to go with it. I think what they're trying to establish is the juxtaposition of in, in, between these two characters. That you have the Moon Knight, which is Mark's character, right? That's what Mark mm-hmm. turns into. And then Steven, who y- you could tell is not... He doesn't understand. He doesn't have control. He doesn't... He, he He's obviously lack of confidence. Obviously lack of self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Um, lack of personal hygiene, by the way, because you, you actually never see him take a shower in any of these for some reason he just gets up and goes to work then like goes to zurich and then comes back and goes to i'm like you don't even remember what you're doing anyway um so you know i I think that's what they're trying to establish here and i think as what i'm what i'm hoping happens is as it goes on we revert to a development a character development of of steven learning how to switch in between the two when it's appropriate Mm mm-hmm what do you think, Andrea? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with Moon Knight because there are elements that I that I am enjoying, um, and there there are elements that I'm not. And I think what it's really coming down to for me is time. I get when when Marvel releases these like limited series, I get really anxious about time, especially when they have something like this where it's like six episodes. That is not a lot of time to do stuff. And I feel like the first two episodes wasted some of my time, especially when we're talking about like episode two sort of reverting to very like safe Marvel like humor and, you know, it's, oh, it's not as bad. We're fighting creatures. like. 
I felt like a lot of this kind of wasted my time where at the end of episode two, I was like, I have a lot of questions going on right now. Like, how on earth if, you know, I'm I'm just being introduced to Mark, who is the Moon Knight, who is, you know, Khonshu's avatar, who's bringing justice, um, who is apparently a mercenary on the edge of death and Khonshu saved him. But like, why did he like, how did he do it? Like, how did he put him into Steven's body? Why Steven's body? Like, how, like, is he really a person? Is, it- is he like, you know, does he really, is he like... You know, Steven's some long lost twin out there somewhere. Did he look like Steven or is this just like a facet of his soul resides in Steven's body? And like, do you know what I mean? I have so many questions right now that I'm not sure are going to be answered in in six episodes because we're already a third of the way through the series. And I feel like this funny humor time that was partially amusing I mean, you know, you you do need a bit of like levity to break things up sometimes. I just feel like it was maybe dragged on like a little bit too long and that that's wasted time that could have been moving this plot forward. Well, is it by the way, is it Steven's body or is it Mark's body? Cuz his wife <laughs> recognizes him. Right. As so Mark. that's that's part of my question. Well, like, it's both of them though. With a multiple well, personality, it's both people's body, you know. But like, then, but, then, but is it just a, But is it just a multiple personality because like Mark was on the edge of death and was a mercenary somewhere. Does like is is that a life that like Steven lived and he just doesn't remember it? Like if so, how does he have a whole backstory? You know what I mean? How does he have a mom that he thinks he grew up with? Like is that his mom? Is that Mark and Steven's mom? Like, does she know Mark? Does she know Steven? Like, I mean, we only know. Right, I know. But you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm I'm just not sure, like, how these pieces fit together. And I would really love some of that to be explained. And I feel like we're already third of the way through this series. So am I going to get these explanations? And also, we have to, you know, go fight Amit's justice priest cult leader avatar yeah so yeah I, so i'm i I, of, I, I like yeah. elements of the show i just feel like i'm already anxious that like there's not enough time to do everything that they want to do and i want them to do sure i a lot of my complaints mm-hmm. come down to still the way it's you know i don't know the tone it, it, it's still when i think of like a path- pathetic character i think of like um joaquin phoenix in her or um mm-hmm. the guy in that rat movie um I forgot what that one's called he's like has all the rats following him around and stuff like that uh it's the guy he's in back to future and charlie's <laughs> angels and stuff um whatever yeah which charlie's um, angels the, oh, he plays the, the dude that rips the girl's hair off and like smells it in Charlie's Oh, Angels. Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover, yes. thank you. Okay. A fantastic actor. Yes. Right. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm catching up with you now. Okay. Uh, Alan says also in Gattaca. <laughs> um, Crispin um, Glover's but in even even when we talk about um multiple personalities, I think a show that's so as ridiculous as doom patrol in season one did better so far with the emotionality of multiple personalities or in the video game i played hellblade sending was saga the like there's a reality and a sadness um that a depression that can be conveyed with this and in I I thought they were going with a more genuine take and making something potentially very serious and impactful. And I don't think it's Oscar Isaac's fault because I saw yeah. him. I saw him in uh, in uh, Ex Machina. Amazing. He's just an amazing actor. He can he can really that's perform. A, that's a trip it's, of a movie, dude. It's a great mm-hmm. movie. And it's you amazing. can be scared of him and think he's he's a terrible person or whatever. And we're just not getting that kind of back and forth here. Mm-hmm. Like, and even Kanshu, what's scarier? Like the mummy from the 90s, you know, Imhotep coming after you. He's going to suck the, your soul out, or whatever, dry you up. 
mm-hmm. or Kanju, who is just kind of there and can't interact with you anyways. You know, it's like I Kanju just is like feel, all bark and no bite. He looks yes. baller and does mm-hmm. nothing. He's it's he looks they, so there's good moments though. where I think like when he's running down the hallway and the lights are flashing and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. But then immediately you have to be like he has to be crazy in the corner. And the woman's like looking at him odd. I, I lost a contact. Immediately they have to bring the humor into it. It can't just be scary and something dark. It has to. It, I, I'm just so tired of it. Moon Knight is really cool. He mm-hmm. seems so cool. We just got the Batman. OK, and Moon Knight is like Batman in Marvel world. And the Batman is dark as hell. It's something different. It feels gritty. You know, when I'm more enthralled, I mean, people make fun of him. I shouldn't, but Robert Pattinson or whatever, or I'm more scared of the Riddler by that dork. You know, like it's they're doing something wrong here. They're not giving me the Moon Knight that I definitely was hoping for. We're getting what's that? So you're you're like you're more scared of Robert Pattinson and you're more scared of Paul Dano, the Riddler, than Moon Knight or Conchu or both. I'm saying I'm so uh, yeah, I I conflated the two. I'm more impressed <laughs> by Robert Pattinson and I believe his him more than I believe Oscar Isaac here. Okay. And I and as far as fear, Kanchu or any of the darker elements, mm-hmm. I am more terrified by Paul Dano's Riddler than what mm-hmm. we're getting here. It feels like they took it more seriously than sure. the kind of joke they sometimes make it here. Mm-hmm. I just, it's always this, yes, Willard. That's what I was thinking of, Alan. Thank you very much. So, hey, look, I get it. Um, they're not making this for me. Mm. They're making it for mass audiences. Mm-hmm. And I wanted a Moon Knight that was more akin to Batman mm-hmm. and not, it, there's less humor in Batman the Animated Series, a typical episode, than there is in these couple episodes. Mm-hmm. That's true. As someone I'm who's just, been watching it, that's true. Exactly. Watch the episode so, with Man, with Man Bat or with a, a guy made of mud. It's more disturbing and mm-hmm. scary than what we've got in Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. And it's pathetic. I, you know, I am going to disagree about believing Oscar Isaac less because I actually think Oscar Isaac, I believe Oscar Isaac I just don't believe his material. Sure. Do you know what I, you know what I'm saying? It, it I think be a tough distinguishing thing. Yes. Yeah, I think yes. he is doing the hell out of some some okay material. I'm not going to yeah. say it's even bad. It's not bad. It's it's just right. not probably living it up to its potential. I think he is doing like the best he can, and I think it's, it's pretty just, damn good. It's a execution on on C writing. Yeah. Yep. Wonderfully put. Yeah, because I I think there's there's like moments of great potential that aren't leading to great payoff. Like you said, John, there's there's leading us down a path of this is going to be darker, this is going to be scary, and then it just ends up being like semi humorous. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's either humorous or semi. and there's moments like when he is talking to himself in the mirror and he smashes the mirror. That's pretty good. Oh, at know? the end of that's, two. Like that's a good moment. You know, and he's starting getting into some, again, a, a little more of the drama between the two and the difficult situation that he's in. You mm-hmm. know, he's prominent promised that, you know, his alter ego is not going to get in the way for Conchu's goal. And, and they allude to, they want to take his wife to uh, replace him. Should mm-hmm. he like step out of line um, too much so which is you know, so just like uh why of course we have to have stakes <laughs> why does it have to yeah. be her right i I, yeah. I want them to play on this internal mental struggle that yeah. he has and I, I don't want what i what i hope they have is a scene where he's in public and he's and it's steven and mark having an argument with each other and trying to take control and you see it from the perspective of somebody who's not yeah. part of this, seeing this guy almost have a mental breakdown. That yeah, they're they're giving us almost that in these first almost. couple of episodes. Like obviously, when he like first meets Ethan Hawke, I I forget where they are. 
in in Europe. Zurich? <laughs> Yeah, I Germany. Said, I said Zurich because it's somewhere in the Alps, and I'm like, Some, oh, yeah, right. It looks like Switzerland, um, but it could be like South Bavaria. Yeah. So, so, so you obviously see him like, you know, being like, oh, here you want the scarab, and his arms just like, freaking. Oh, it's so but good. It's done I just, in a like, funny manner, right? It is, it's, but I also like. There was there was a moment of like it's funny, but I also just like respected the hell out of Oscar Isaac doing sure. it because I just felt like. That is so hard to look that good and that like astonished at your body to make it be purposeful and not purposeful. Sure. Well, um, and that, that humor so like fit. What? Sorry. Um, that that humor though that John we were talking about her that 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 moment was like funny. Moment, yeah. Right. The one um, you were talking about where he's like getting backed up and all of a sudden he's in the elevator. That was like a jarring cut to something different. Yeah. So I I feel like that the first part there was, you know, us watching him like and Mark struggle a little bit, but we didn't know who Mark was yet. And then we have this second episode where like Steven's like, oh, the suit, the suit. OK, I'm in the suit and I'm sort of the Moon Knight and I'm looking at myself slash Mark in the bus window and these tourists or other just like general bus riders are watching me have an argument with myself and also an invisible creature. Like it was almost like really cool and creepy. And people were like, what is this? There's nothing there. He's just a fancy drunk. Like, you know, it was, it was an almost cool moment, but again, it was treated with humor. Like he's a fancy drunk. I I guarantee you whatever scene they try to do with that, the CGI character of Gollum, Talking back to himself and arguing, Gollum and Smeagol will be better. <laughs> we'll be treated with more seriousness and will be more impactful uh, than whatever they put in this show. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. Yeah, but that's that's a master class in voice acting. Do it. <laughs> like, well, you have yeah, all the money. And, all. And they have the actor to do it. Like, Oscar Isaac can do it. He can do I, it, yeah. I, I don't doubt that he can't do it. Yeah. You know? They probably could, yeah, given the, given the space. I, I want them, and I, and I was reading Andrea notes, uh, with uh, uh, the boss, right? This, this, yes, you know, Donna. The, the, the pure contrast that they're trying to show between how Steven's character is viewed by other people, like the security guard never remembers his name, his <laughs> boss always talks down to him, you know, and nobody just takes like, him seriously. Just like on the saddest, smallest power trips ever. I know. Like, you're on inventory. Like, remember you're on inventory. Like, oh, my God, the the small power you wield is so sad. And I want there to be a scene where where Mark comes back and just lays into that woman. Like, I think that right. because it shows the, like, rebirth, the confidence cool. build that, that this sure. character has had. That'd be good. Does he yeah. have enough time to do it? There are only four yeah. episodes left. I'm already worried. <laughs> is it is it yeah. official that there's only going to be Egypt. six? I, I believe yeah. so, yes. Yeah, thanks. I mean, Hawkeye was only six. Yeah, but once again, Hawkeye falls into that realm where I think that was just a homage to Hawkeye to show how he fared. His story needed to end. That's how they were mm-hmm. going to end it. I don't want to dive into Hawkeye because I was. There are uh, officially yeah. six episodes That's, in Moon Knight. I also like Hawkeye, but I also like have a crush on both those people in real life. So <laughs> Heather Poe and uh, or Pug Pug. What? What's her name? What's her name? Haley Where Steinfeld we... was the person. Well, Haley Steinfeld, but then the the short one that's Black Widow's sister, Pug Pug. Florence Pugh. Pugh. Okay. <laughs> Harry Pug? What the? Oh my God. <laughs> Suddenly, I really feel great about my whole it's April, September slip up. Thank you, John. I knew enough, who you were I'll... talking about, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't... Oh my God. Hey, I was Harry actually talking about Pug. Haley Steinfeld and Jeremy Renner, but. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, no, Don't I be think... so heteronormative, John. God, God. <laughs> this is the guy who said he could be caught by the rock. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. No, I'm just, um. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm comfortable and I'm comfortable with it. 
That's right. You yeah. go. No, you. I, just, I just think, um, <laughs> you know, the, like I liked both those characters. I thought it was a good homage. I just. I, I just don't Sorry, want Harry this. Pug is going to stick with me for a while. <laughs> I, know, I can't get it out of my head. I was like, who the hell is he talking about? <laughs> I thought he said Harry and her pug. And I'm like, who are these? I, I don't remember what I said. I just, <laughs> oh, yeah, there you Roll the tape it. back. Roll Harry the pug, tape yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my God, that's but, adorable. <laughs> but I hope that the six, the, the, the six episodes we get, I, I really hope they stick with moon knight i i hope they don't do a deviation where they're trying to tie him into like the eternals or try to tie him into um you know if they have like on the on the last scene of the final episode is we find out he's gonna have a part in the multi in in doctor strange and the multiverse Mm, mm -hmm. of madness i don't care i love it that's fine i just i just what i worry about is and I, i keep bringing it back to what they did with boba fett as i was so jacked up to see a boba fett series and then they took half the series and made it about the Mandalorian. And I'm like, mm-hmm. then why even have this character's own series? Sure. So as long as they stick to Moon Knight, as long as they, they continue to drive that character home, um, mm-hmm. you know, Oscar Isaac can deliver he on can. anything that you give. Trust him. him. So just, yeah, just trust him to do this part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to sit and be all doom and gloom about it because, like, ultimately, I'm enjoying it fine. Like, it's mm-hmm. you know, I don't, it's it's all right. Um, and there are elements that I really like. Um, I just, just, just wanted more. You know, I I didn't expect more, but I wanted more, mm-hmm. uh, and and something something different. So, uh, this is this is the same kind of hero that would fit in very well with a Daredevil. You know, mm-hmm. I'm used to coming from the Netflix mm-hmm. Daredevil show. This is not that, mm-hmm. not even close to the level of intensity um, that we got from something like Daredevil. So, well, like you said, yeah. episode one was closer, and then episode two kind of like yeah. it, broke there was from an it. opportunity to go that way. So, so we um, could go back. Yeah, you give it which, two episodes, man. You got to give it more than two episodes. Yeah, but like I mean, said, we're a third way through. Yeah, we're a third way through. That's, your that's, that's and the, like we're supposed to get here. That's the danger. And then the danger is if you move back, are they staying back? You know what I mean? Like John and I have talked about, you know, in watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, we both felt like that show suffered from like some very serious like mood and plot imbalance and wild swings and shift in tone affected like the overall quality of the series. Like, so I don't, I don't want Moon Knight to be this like, struggle between like you know going darker and like lighter you know there obviously like things need to have balance but i just don't want it to be these like wild like pendulum seesaws of you know that kind of shift so i guess my hope would be they do go back to more of an episode one tone and stay there don't don't keep like bringing me back and forth because then I feel like off kilter and I'm just not like into the show. Cause you keep bringing me back out. Yeah. Well, the Falcon and winter soldier ones that had to end like that had to end at the end of that season. Right. That yeah. Was the conclusion. That was the conclusion of the Bucky Barnes and Falcon. Um, story, arc. which is, which is fine. But like, they just like did these weird, like, it we're was. F- like, we're friends, enemies. We hate each other. We've worked e- with each other before. We we feel like we've never worked with each other before. Like, what is happening in all it this? Was a buddy cop can't be buddy cop. Yeah, and that it was, was they too were going exactly. hard. They, it was, they it wanted like, the buddy yeah. cop, but they also wanted to talk about issues, and they also wanted to tie into the MCU. Like, they wanted a lot of things from that show mm-hmm. that didn't fit together. You know, like well, and it, it and it felt out of order. Like we're buddy yeah. cops. Wait, we don't know each other. We don't like each other. Like, oh nope, we're buddies again. Like, nope, we have to work on our relationship over here. Like, it felt either like you have trying a relationship or you together. don't. <laughs> right. It it was not like like they could have taken a blueprint much more akin to Lethal Weapon. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to do you, you, that's your blueprint for a le- buddy cop. The original movie. buddy cop. Right. Yeah. You know, where you you don't you have two people that don't know each other and mm-hmm. they have they're shoved together. They have to work together and then they end up 
creating a, a really great bond to one another and then accomplishing their mission in the end. Right. Well, that's great, but you'd, you'd be starting these people in a different place because they're already buddies. Mm -hmm. So why are you trying to break them up to put them back together? Yeah. And then their situation and why they had to be together seemed kind of weird to begin with. And we didn't right. understand their situation, like where they are mission wise or what this you know, just. Right. Waste the, my time. Like, yeah. That a mess. And that's, and uh, that's that ultimately what I don't want from like Moon Knight is don't waste and my I don't time think because you don't have a lot of my time. Much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. Any final thoughts? Anything we haven't covered? I haven't really looked. I haven't looked through people's notes, um, but I feel like I've said what I need to say about this show off mm -hmm. two episodes. I just think if you're a waiter at a steakhouse and a guy says, yeah, I'll take the best cut of meat, and you say, oh, I'll give you that. Well done. <laughs> you should be fired. You should be instantly fired. Immediately. Immediately fired. Immediately. Oh, and yeah. That was so awkward. I, I had like, yeah. rewind it. I was like, wait, did I hear that? Did you say well done? And he goes, yeah, that sounds fine. I'm like, no, that sounds awful. He's like upselling him on this like high quality meat. And he's like, sure, like you can, I'll just char that up for you right here. Like, yeah. <laughs> God, that was the weirdest. Uh, that actually, yeah. I did, I did like that scene though, because it did remind me, um, I didn't like the content of the scene, but I, but I liked the, emotional depth like the very yes. you know like oscar isaac did feel appropriately pathetic to the moment of like god my life man like this shit i just can't you know like he's missed three days he thought he had a date things were looking so up and then like oh what happened to me i both don't know what the hell i got myself into and like the one bright spot of my week where I had a date is just like crushed. Like, I don't know. I just, I read all of that from Oscar Isaac. Sure. So sure. I think he continues to do a, a fab, a fabulous job and he needs to be given better material. All right. Well, we're going to have, uh, I know we're going to have, uh, Pete on sometime who is a moon Knight fan in terms of, uh, like traditionally the comics and stuff. And uh, we'll get his take as well. We're all Moon Knight normies here. So take that for what you will. We're, mm -hmm. we're consuming it like most people will be consuming it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, those are our thoughts. We're going we're gonna to have to do, I feel like we're going to have to do a, you know, we'll have Pete on, we're going to have to have Chris on, and then we get everybody all you back for the f final thing or something like that. Are and you trying the, to get uh, like an end game thing here? Just, <laughs> just you know, but game. we're just going to wing the it. Threads. You know, if there's, if one of, one of you doesn't work out, we're going to move the other way. And then, you know, we're just going to eliminate one of you based on like the number of views we get on the video. Yeah. So Do I know. get my own spin-off series. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that I can get a conclusion arc later on. Yeah. <laughs> 